So, without further ado, I would love to announce Miss Carmen Shea to talk about Impressions Canada. I never stop doodling in classes or filling up sketchbooks with, well, more doodles. My doodling has gotten me into more trouble with more than a few teachers. Hi, Pam! <laughs> and annoys my friends and classmates. My passion for art probably started when I was two years old and I got my first pack of Crayola crayons. I drew on all the pieces of paper my mom had given me. And then when I ran out, I started scribbling on the walls. In my <laughs> eyes, I was making masterpieces of modern art but my mom was as impressed. <laughs> Little did I know that almost 13 years later, I would still be trying to recreate masterpieces of modern art. Hello, my name is Carmen Shea, and welcome to my masterworks presentation on Impressionism, the first modern art movement. So, these old French guys who painted some people. Who cares, right? Most people have probably heard of Impressionism, or know names like Monet and Renoir. Some of these paintings probably look familiar to you, but others might not. Impressionism was much more than pretty pictures, though. It was radical and progressive, almost like the graffiti of its time. Monet, Renoir, Degas, Sicily, Pissarro, and Manet. These six painters are the most well-known Impressionists. Impressionism was an artistic movement that started in France in the 1800s. Oftentimes, their subject matter was more domestic and focused around the life of the middle class than the traditional art style of painting religious figures or royal royalty. They often painted landscapes and street scenes instead. This was very progressive at the time, and most of Paris was unprepared and unready for the change brought by the Impressionists. Impressionism was a new idea in the 1800s, frowned upon by authorities and critics alike. The artists faced a huge struggle socially to gain respect. The Impressionists were often considered unprofessional or sloppy because of the bold and unhidden brushstrokes that were unique to Impressionism. Almost no one would buy Impressionist paintings for the very same reason. Despite everything going against them, they persevered and created a very powerful art movement that is still influential to this day. Without the Impressionists leading the way, other even more progressive movements would have never had a chance to begin. The dictionary defines modern art as art produced from the 1860s to the 1970s that rejected the traditionally accepted forms and emphasized individual experimentation and sensibility. Sounds a lot like Impressionism, right? As I said before, Impressionism is considered to be the first modern art movement. But what did I mean by that? Before the Impressionists, there were, of course, artists who rejected the traditional academic style of painting. But Impressionism was the first time those artists came together to create a movement. The Paris Salon, an exhibition held annually in Paris, and a leading art authority of the time, usually rejected Impressionist art as unfinished. In 1874, when the Impressionists hosted a show independent of the salon, their work was not taken seriously by artists and art critics. In fact, Impressionism actually got its name from something that a critic said. Impression, I was certain of it. I was just telling myself that since I was impressed, there had to be some impression in it. And what freedom, what ease of workmanship, Wallpaper in its embryonic state is more finished than that seascape. <laughs> Louis Leroy was an art critic for a newspaper who attended the first Impressionist exhibition. His now famous critique of Impression Sunrise is an important piece of Impressionist history and is the only reason he's remembered today. One of the main reasons Impressionism was, oh, sorry. One of the main reasons Impressionism was so unpopular was that it was the first art movement to include women as main group members. The work of these female Impressionists was, for the first time in history, considered equal to the work of male artists. 
The legacy of painters such as Berthe Morisot or Mary Cassatt is incredibly important to art history because it was the first time that female painters were recognized and celebrated. Berthe Morisot was a French Impressionist painter from an upper middle class family. Despite the fact that as a female painter, she was often considered less than her male counterparts, her style was an influence on painters such as Monet and Renoir. She was an often some unseen contributor to the movement and over the years created several of its most famous pieces. Moiseau couldn't access the range of subject matter available to her colleagues because at that time, women were not allowed in salons, bars, or opera houses. They also couldn't hire models for portraits. Moiseau was arguably one of the most daring impressionists, often leaving her artwork blank in the corners and blurring the lines of finished and unfinished. She often painted women in domestic, oh sorry, as you can see based on the paintings behind me, Moriso often painted women in domestic scenes, which is reflective of her limited subject matter. She was also brutally honest in her paintings, and she painted life the way it really was, without romanticizing it. To critics, however, these daring paintings were delicate or feminine, while the work of her male peers was original and vigorous. Mary Cassatt was one of the leading artists of the Impressionist movement. However, she is not as well known as other Impressionists. This lack of documentation did not prevent her from having an influence, though, and she brought a uniquely feminine perspective to the movement. Cassatt, oh, Cassatt deliberately chose unattractive models for her paintings to show that art doesn't need to show traditional beauty to be beautiful. She painted women with respect and understanding that shows through in her art. Cassatt was the only American in the Impressionist circle and had many connections on either side of the Atlantic. <laughs> Several modern art movements were inspired by Impressionism, post-Impressionism being the most well-known of these. These painters were a little bit younger than the Impressionists and had a variety of different styles among them. Famous post-Impressionists like Cezanne or Van Gogh are sometimes considered Impressionist, even though they belong to a completely different movement. Post-Impressionism was more structured and orderly than Impressionism, but still used dramatic brushstrokes and bold colors in their paintings. Okay, so now you guys know all about the old French artists. Let's take a look at what they painted. An Impressionist painting has loose, thin, and visible brushstrokes that become more detailed from the edges in, focusing on the subject. This painting by Berthe Morisot, titled Young Girl in a Ball Gown, is a very good example of this aspect of Impressionism. The loose brush strokes focus on the subject's face, which subconsciously draws the eye of the viewer toward the focal point of the painting. Morisot achieved this by leaving once again sections of canvas left unpainted around the edges, but was careful to not include these sections in the figure. This highlights the figure's importance in the painting and shows it as the focal point. Another aspect of Impressionism is the use of broken color. Broken color is created by applying two colors of unmixed paint close together and allowing them to blend together in the eye of the viewer. This technique creates the illusion of life much more accurately than blended colors. Monet was a master of this technique, as is demonstrated by this seascape. From far away, the painting is beautiful, but when you go close up, you can see many different colors that haven't been blended. You can barely even tell what you're looking at. Can anyone tell me where this section of the painting was taken? Um, in fact, it was actually taken from the ocean, but I, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. <laughs> the final character 
characteristic of an Impressionist painting I will talk about is a focus on light. As demonstrated in this painting by Alfred Sicily, light was almost a subject. The goal of Impressionism was to capture light in its essence and to use that to create paintings that seemed almost alive. This is evident in the way that the water and shadows are painted. It looks almost like you were standing there seeing what he saw. For the process part of my masterworks, I decided to create three Impressionist inspired paintings. The paintings would be inspired by an original Impressionist painting, but the subject matter and composition would be completely different. To start my process, I chose 10 paintings that I felt demonstrated Impressionism. Using those paintings, I started to think about which ones would be most suitable for my project. I started out with around 10 different paintings to choose from, and using those, I chose three that I wanted to paint. The final three were Bolobama Malta at Night by Camille Passaro, The Harbor at L'Oreal by Berth Morisot, and Young Woman in Green by Mary Cassatt. I chose Bolobama Malta at Night because of the detail in the piece that I would find challenging to replicate. The Harbor at L'Oreal is definitely one of my favorite Impressionist paintings because of the way that the water is painted and the care that the artist took creating the reflections. I chose the third painting, Young Women in Green, as a challenge to myself to create a portrait. Using those three paintings, I found three photos that I felt were a good comparison to the original paintings. These three photos would end up being the reference photos that I used to base my paintings on. I then met with my advisor, Anne, to work on sketching. We decided that I would do the pieces in acrylic paint, and she taught me how to create sketches that would help me make my paintings. After months of preparation, I was finally ready to start my first painting. Using the things I learned when I met with Anne, I drew some thumbnail sketches of my reference photo. Thumbnails, also known as value sketches, are used to help understand the light and dark in a painting. I went with my other advisor, Janet, to start painting. She taught me about how color worked and the technique behind acrylic painting. We met several more times to work on the painting, and after about a month, it was finally done. I forgot to take pictures of the process for this painting. So without further ado, here's the first painting that I finished. based on the painting The Harbor at L'Oreal by Berthe Morisot. The first step to make this painting was to sketch an outline on my canvas. I then painted the sky, followed by the mountains, then the ocean and land. To start my second painting, once again, I created an outline on my canvas. Then, once the outline was finished, I filled in the painting using only two colors, purple and white. This photo was taken during the process. At the end of painting in only purple and white, the painting looked something like this. After this was finished, I began to fill in the painting with color. Here's another photo taken to, during the coloring process. I will now show some videos that I took during my painting process. This video was taken at the very beginning of my coloring process. I had just begun to fill in the purple with varying shades of pink and blue. I used water mixed with paint to make color washes that I layered to get the effect of light. Of all of my paintings, this color process was definitely my favorite. Yet. 
This video was taken around halfway through the coloring process. I had put a blue wash over half the road and begun adding color to the reflections on the street. I also began adding color to the buildings on the other side of the street. As you can probably see, I had to use a very small brush to get the amount of detail that I needed into the painting. Sorry, that was just the same video over again. I forgot to play the first video. After about two months of this work on this painting, I finally finished it. My third painting was inspired by a Mary Cassatt painting titled Young Women in Green. I chose this painting as a challenge to myself to create a portrait. To start this painting, I sketched an outline of my subject onto the canvas. This has acted as a guide for where to put the paint. I also remembered to take a picture this time. After this, I began painting. The first part of my process was to roughly block in the light, shadows, and colors that I would use. Oops. I blocked in the whole painting using this technique. And then I began to refine the piece. After the first time I refined it, the painting looked like this. I had just begun to add the background and to add definition to the face. I refined it a second time by adding definition to the clothes, hair, and background lighting. The finishing touches on this painting were more dramatic highlights and shadows reworking the hair, and adding definition to the eyes. This painting was by far the most difficult of the three that I did, but it ended up being my favorite. I encourage everyone to come and look at the paintings up close once my presentation is over. Throughout my masterworks process, I made a few paintings that were not a part of my actual masterworks. In fact, there's one on the table over there right now. This dress has a painting on the back that I finished a few months ago. Painting on a dress is completely different than painting on canvas. For one thing, fabric is much more elastic than canvas, which meant that I had to tape the dress onto a piece of paper to avoid the paint mixing. Additionally, Additionally, dress fabric absorbs paint, but canvas doesn't. This gave me a lot of trouble painting the fire because of how long the paint takes to dry. Last week, I finished, oh wow, sorry. Last week, I finished another painting. It was originally going to be a part of my masterworks, but it, I decided not to include it in the impressionist section because I thought I wouldn't finish it on time. didn't end up being done in the Impressionist style, so my advisor Amanda calls it post-Impressionist. <laughs> <laughs> to make my paintings, I had to have, well, paint. I used a mixture of Opus acrylic paints and Liquitex student acrylics. Here are just some of the paints that I used. But to create a painting, you need much more than paint. Paint brushes are also important. I used long-handled brushes from Opus. Here are some of them.
Surprisingly, I needed many other things, such as a spray bottle, a yogurt container, paper towels, and wax paper. You're probably thinking, why would I need all these things? Well, spray bottles are used to create, to help my paint stay wet, or to create the washes that I used in my second painting. Mixing colors is an important part of painting, and wax paper is a great mixing surface. The yogurt container I use as a bucket to clean off all my dirty brushes. To me, Masterworks was as easy as riding a bike, except for the bike is on fire. <laughs> and you're on fire. And if you don't finish the race in time, you'll get burnt. <laughs> I learned a lot, though. At the start of the year, I wanted to make a timeline of art through history. But then I stumbled across Impressionism, and I realized it was more interesting to me than the rest of art history combined. Originally, I was just going to write a research paper. But I decided to make some paintings to accompany my research paper. This process definitely helped me learn not to procrastinate. In the future, I could see myself pursuing art as a career, but without the history aspect. I really hope my presentation didn't put anyone to sleep. I also hope, hope you learned a few things about the Impressionists. I want to thank everyone who helped me with my masterworks. In particular, I want to thank my internal advisor, Amanda Zabo, for putting up with all my crazy ideas and keeping me focused through this whole process. I also want to thank my two amazing external advisors, Janet Eseva and Ann Beattie. You're both experts in your field. Thank you so much for taking the time to help me with this process. I would also like to thank my parents for buying me all the paints and for your endless support. I couldn't have done this without you. I would like to thank my sister because she asked me to. <laughs> and I would also like to thank all of you for coming and watching my presentation. <laughs>